Well, we're here at the 155th Canterbury AMP show, and it wouldn't be a Canterbury AMP show if we didn't talk to the character of the country this week, and uh, has always been a character since the day was born, Tim Black. How are you today, Tim Black? I'm well, Sarah. Great to see you here. Now, you are also our Senior Vice President here at the Canterbury AMP show, and it has been quite some time to get to this position. It, tell me, uh, tell me what's uh, the career path. The career path, Sarah. Well, I came here as a junior quite a few years ago with the wool industry. Well, probably prior to that, I, uh, I've been here, I think, pretty much every year I've been around. My father's been involved with the show for a long time, 70 years this year he's been involved with the Canterbury AMP show. I've been coming here a long time with that. Then I got into the stock and station industry. Um, I was lucky enough uh, to be nominated onto the wool section. And um, I've been helping out with that for a good number of years. I judge at quite a few shows around the place, but I uh, haven't judged here at Canterbury because I've always been involved with the Canterbury show. But uh, that led on to being nominated for the general committee. And, um, and then, then how, long you, how long is the process until you get to the point of being president? It will be 2018 with your first Lady Brooke. Uh, yes, with the Lady Brooke. Uh, it's about 22 years. Now, yeah, traditionally, wow. it's because it's about 22 um, on the general committee. But it has been a wee bit shorter for me because some people have resigned and through different circumstances have shortened the process for me. Fantastic. It's going to be a very exciting year. Now, Tim, tell us about uh, your years back when you were a wool agent for PGG Wrightson and then over to Elders, uh, now working at the wool store in Timaru you, that you own. Um, how have you seen the wool industry in, the, in your career chop and change? Well, Sarah, I came in after the boom of the late 80s. I missed all of that. I was at school in those days. I came in, I've really seen a depressed wool market, to be fair. Um, it's something I'm pretty passionate about. Wool is a fantastic fibre. I have seen it go through pretty um, traumatic times in that time. At the moment, we've got pretty much the worst crossbred prices we've ever had right at the moment. But we've got a wool auction on Thursday, and um, it's looking... We're going to have a few issues because this merino market in Australia this week has just gone mad. Looking to be really good and probably one of the best sales of the season. And um, for quite a few years on Thursday, we're going to be selling potentially up to about $8 million, $9 million worth of wool on Thursday here at the show. Is merino predominantly what you process through your wool store? Yes, it is. Um, but we do cover right, right across the bases. Um, quite a lot of crossbred comes through, halfbred. But yes, it is predominantly merino. Um, we do all the reclass and interlighting work for um, the New Zealand Merino Company. And um, yeah, this year we've been pretty busy, a lot of wool coming through. What is it? What, how are we going to fix the crossbred industry, Tim Black? Well, uh, I suppose I've got a few theories. I'm trying a few things myself. Um, I think we've got to get back to basics and people s to start using natural products again. Um, it's very hard in New Zealand to actually buy woolen carpets. So... Um, I'm looking at doing uh, a few trials at the moment. We're doing woolen insulation. I've got a few of my clients who have used it themselves and absolutely love it. And we're looking into woolen pillows at the moment as well. And um, look, the price is, um, it's now, with, with insulation, um, it's comparable to the likes of pink bats and everything. And it's a natural product. And a lot of clients like using their own product in their own properties. Back to the Canterbury show and of course rural culture at, at large here today but also throughout the year. Could you summarise for me Tim Black what it is like to live in South Canterbury and uh, the lower part of the South Island from a cultural perspective? Brilliant. Um, I think that's the first word that comes to mind. It is that for me it's been a really good environment to uh, be working in. I didn't grow up there. I came from Canterbury originally Sarah but um, South Canterbury and further south, it's, it's heartland rural New Zealand. Um, and I suppose to quote Sarah Perry, there are some good bastards in that area. Um, a lot of people, and a lot of people from down south travel to the likes of Canterbury AMP show. Um, coming back to the show, it's where a lot of people come to meet, and you just see a lot of those people you don't see all year round. You see them once a year, and we all meet here, and a lot of them are from down south. Absolutely. It's been a big part of my growing up in culture as well and I absolutely love the fact that uh, we're able to t talk to, to yourself and later on Peter Gilbert, the current president of uh, the Canterbury AMP oh, he's Show. he's a good man. Now in terms of Canterbury uh, AMP Show being here in another, another 155 years, um, the security over this land and site? Oh definitely. Look, we're all about the future. Um, we've got a lot of young people coming on, great people on the committee and great people we're looking to come onto the committee and be involved. Uh, the AMP is all around volunteers and as long as we've got good people willing to uh, give up their time and energy, this show is definitely going to go on. It's going from strength to strength. Um, Jeff Bone, the event director, 
puts his heart and soul into it. He does a great job, and um, we're going to be here at least another 150 years. Radio Live Rural Exchange.